Uh, we must let you know something about uh, the friends of the trumpet. Uh, mute. These are called mute. This one is called a Harmon mute with a stem. Very rarely used in orchestration today. Uh, sort of uh, used to be referred to some, uh, in some areas as the Mickey Mouse mute because it, you, you get that type of Mickey Mouse type approach. And it's only used, well, I wouldn't say only used, it's used quite a lot in, uh, for comedy type of sound. And then, of course, you can take out the stem. And this is the area that uh, the type of sound that the most jazz people like very much. They like the, this particular sound because it's, well, it's very conducive to the jazz uh, idiom. <laughs> That's the Harmon. Then we have the cup mute because of the nature of its build. Uh, it's built like a cup and it has a few degrees of uh, areas that you can push it in for loudness or softening. You can put it there, let's push it in a little more. Or even a little more. Or even a little more. So forth, and this is nice sometimes to practice with at home when uh, uh, people are busy, or in the back of the classroom when other things are going on, or wherever wherever you want to practice where you don't want to disturb people. You can use this one. Can't hear it too well. I sometimes uh, practice on airplanes traveling from one city to the other on long trips uh, because of the hum of the motor. I'm sitting right next to someone who's sleeping. You know, I got my horn in, I'm packing. And he never knows I'm there it's just until I started dancing a little bit, you know. And this is called a uh, straight mute. Sometimes uh, uh, an excellent sound for a, a section. So you've heard the, these sounds. Now here's one here that goes way, this is the daddy of all these. We always like to give you little bits and pieces of jazz history. So this goes way back to New Orleans in the area known as, used to be known as Congo Square. Uh, it's now been developed into uh, an area which is known as Louis Armstrong Park where they have an excellent uh, park and beautiful uh, theater and a great auditorium for, for concerts. Well, all the guys used to hang out there and the cats used to sit around and, and have jam sessions and there were coconut trees around and the uh, cats used to take coconuts and saw them in half and drink their refreshments out of these coconut shells. And uh, one day some cat was laying there with, picked up a coconut shell and said, hey man, it's, it's just about the size of my belly of my horn. Let's dig that, you know? Try that and he went, he said, wow, it makes a nice wah-wah type, type sound. So that was the beginning of that until someone passed through the kitchen one day and saw the plumber's helper laying there. It was the kitchen, not the bathroom. Uh, saw the plumber's helper laying there and he tried that and said, hey, that's about the size of my coconut. So he tried that and says, the size is a little more flexible. So he found that he could maneuver and manipulate it a little more. And then you could even get the same effect with it you get the same effect with that as you can with almost with this listen to the similarity you hear the similarity so forth. so this is only cost a couple of bucks and this costs a lot of bucks <laughs> so as a matter of fact this doesn't even cost a, a buck I don't think but anyhow, we'd like to have you know some, uh, something about the colorations of sounds and the implements which we use to, to bring them about. And uh, another thing that we'd like very much for you to be aware of, in order to, to have fun with your instruments and for your instruments to 
enjoy longevity along with you yourselves on the instruments, uh, you must know how to take care of them. That's very, very important. Now, these are some of the things which we have uh, found are great friends of the trumpet. This is called a snake, simply because it crawls up like a snake. And uh, we like very much to have all people who are going to own a trumpet to have a snake. The way that you use a snake is to just push this little gizmo through there, all the way through, until it goes all the way down, past this, and, and it cleans out. I'm just going to show you. I think my hand is a little bit, well, it's not so dirty. How about that? But the snake cleans that out, and then you can even put it through all of the parts on the horn. Put it through there, and run that through, and put it through here, run that through. And the snake does an excellent job. So uh, you make sure that you are an owner of a snake, because it's very, very important. And uh, not only uh, should you have a snake to clean out the parts of the horn, you should have, there's a smaller uh, graduated uh, gadget with the, the uh, with the hairs on the end that go from point to a graduated end with a, with a little handle on it, which fits up into the back of your mouthpiece and it brushes right in. It's a little brush, uh, that, that angle of brush, and you push it in there and just turn it around, cleans the mouthpiece out perfectly. And the reason that you have to do this is because uh, trumpets are made with uh, certain bores and once you become accustomed to the type of opening that you have throughout your instrument, uh, that's the way you're going to learn to play it. And, and the minute that you become negligent to the point where you don't keep your instrument clean, uh, it's sort of like, uh, well, the valves of our, of our bodies, uh, the, 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 the veins of our bodies. Uh, if you don't uh, eat the proper food, uh, uh, the veins uh, start uh, getting smaller and smaller because of things that cause, that cause them to coat on the inside. And, and the, the, the column, the, the passageway becomes smaller and smaller. The same thing will happen with the horn. And instead of blowing through a tube that's that big, you're going to find yourself blowing through a tube that, that's, that's that big. And it very, becomes very, very difficult. And as a result, it makes you have to work harder. And sometimes uh, it's almost impossible for you to play in tune. So we'd like very much for you to know something about the care of your instrument and the parts and the fact that it is a wind instrument and you must know how to produce the sound from your sound post and that it is a trumpet and the history of it as far back as it goes. And uh, we want you to get involved and get ready to uh, have some fun with us because we got a few things that we want to lay on you that we hope are going to be fun and uh, stick around, okay?